Oh. All right, so keep in mind, this week we have a normal week. Monday, uh, tomorrow you have vocab 1 through 10. Monday, index cards uh, 11 through 20. <laughs> what? For Oh, my God. Tuesday, you have 21 through 30, an outline, and Wednesday, you have a test. And then we are moving into development, which is super, super exciting. So here we go. Uh, so I'm filling in number three on your focus. I'm going to answer the second part of the question right now. We'll come back for the first. So when we think about de developmentally delayed people, we put them in certain contexts. They struggle with certain components of our society. What are some of the ways that we measure how well someone is doing? Does anyone know? Think about it. what are some things that if you can't do, people are like, what you can't do? What is one? Jack. Social skills. social skills. So write down under number three, social skills. Being able to carry a conversation and interact in a normal way. Every single one of you knows someone who is awkward. Some of you more awkward than others, yes? Okay. You also happen to know someone who very much just stumbles through social experiences, correct? Okay. The, lower, the more issues you have with struggling means you're probably on a spectrum, whether you're on the low side or the high side. What's another way we look at how well someone's doing? Hello? Hello? Hi. So all we care about is social skills. So if you're the... Oh, what do you got, Carson? Well, that's social skills. Huh? Motor functions. And why do we care about a person's... Hold on, don't write it down yet. Why do we care about a person's motor skills? How well you can move and stuff. Why? Now, what, what, what does all people have to be able to do, Carson? <laughs> In our society, everyone needs to do what? No, no, they don't. Society would be actually run smoother if people didn't think for themselves. How about work? Yeah, employment. Yeah, how are you going to pay for all of your stuff, people? you got to work. I feel like there's a Britney quote in here. With that being said, this kid doesn't think I'm that funny, but sometimes she tries. She like, huh, gives me a little half sigh, a half laugh. She doesn't think it's funny. Anyway, with that being said, uh, working. Uh, do you think most people who fall under the category of developmentally delayed work no, they don't. Very few actually are able to hold and maintain jobs. So their employment opportunities definitely affect. Okay. How about hygiene? Do you like being the stinky kid? Do we like being near the stinky kid? No, absolutely not. When we talk about hygiene, which is a category, what are we talking about when we speak, mention hygiene? Adrian, what's a hygiene component we care about? Showering, yes, it's one of my favorite things in the world, and I appreciate the you people shower, so thank you. What is something else that we care about when we talk about hygiene? Sydney? Brushing your teeth. Brushing your teeth, yes. Okay, this is actually a skill. It's a motor function. You have to be able to have the actual physical talent to do it, as well as the know-withal uh, know to do it on a regular basis. Because if you brush your teeth once a month, it ain't going to really help. Okay, what's another major hygiene component that we are facing when we talk about this type of stuff? All of you did it this morning, and I am grateful because it would make for an awkward conversation. Jillian? Yes! I'm so glad you got dressed today because it would be so awkward, would it not? I'm not going to lie, this morning I did struggle putting on clothes. McCray asked, are you okay? Because my hair got stuck in the, the, the armhole, and it was like, ah. No. Yeah, because like the bun thing. You know, it just gets caught sometimes. Yeah, because I go have to go to the dog park every morning. So I wear like yoga pants. I wear like yoga pants and like a crappy t shirt. This is a nicer t shirt. <laughs> so like I go to the dog park and then I come home and I sit on my couch and drink my coffee and watch my news and then I get dressed. And then I get stuck in holes sometimes. So hygiene. We're talking about bathing. We're talking about brushing your teeth. We're talking about uh, being able to dress yourself. And then we also, and then we have uh, food. There's two major components that we discuss about food. What are the food components that we discuss? Come on. Uh, why would we care about people's food? Owens. They can feed it to 
If they can actually, okay, we have three categories. If they can actually feed themselves. We care about food intake. Are they actually feeding themselves? Are they capable of doing it? What's another thing we worry about? Jillian. Like picking the right foods, like making sure you're not just eating chicken. Yes. I don't know about you, but I know I would just love to eat chicken tenders and french fries every single day with ranch and honey mustard. So some nuggets I will dunk in the ranch. Some I will dump. Dunk in the honey mustard. Maybe sometimes I'll mix. <laughs> oh my god, I've never actually done it. I'm a very much a separatist. It's good. It's experience. Oh my god, I don't know if I'm like ready for that. That seems overwhelming. Okay, so what we have to care about, hopefully, as you've gotten older and your real learning curve will come once you get to college, you will realize you're not, you, you shouldn't eat whatever you want. Now, I'm currently going through a binge fest of just eating junk food, but I'm learning, relearning that I shouldn't be doing this because I feel like crap, because I eat like crap, you know what I mean? This is what's happening right now, but I've got a lot going on. A, it's writing week. So, with that being said, if you are developmentally delayed, are you thinking, I better pass on chicken fingers and french fries. I'm probably just getting a nice healthy salad. You think that's a, probably a conversation that occurs? No, it's very much so I want what I want, especially the lower you get in IQ. Obviously, not eating healthy uh, is going to have long-term effects, correct? Okay? Um, and stuff like that. And finally, what is our third phase of food? Picking the right food, eating the right food, cooking and preparing the right food. Can you cook for yourself? Can you prepare food for yourself? Will you be able to provide for yourself? So those are the four major <laughs> categories that we use to discuss uh, the levels and capabilities of mental retardation. So, into the box. I'm going to fill out box number two for you right now. <coughs> you will see the levels. So the first one is mild, 55 to 70. So an IQ box, right? 55 to 70. In the box, uh, the next box, you are going to, to write down what they're capable of and stuff like that. I'm going to cover all the four major categories. Is that fair? So make a couple of notes and stuff like that because on your test on Wednesday, I'm going to give you a scenario. So this is Steve. Steve can do this, 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 and this. What level is Steve? Okay. So that's what you're testing a little bit. So uh, mild IQ. These are uh, the most common type of mental retardation you're going to see. Here at Plant High School, if I had to guess, I would say about 90 to 95% of our special education students are going to be your mildly uh, mentally retarded. Uh, what are what requires, and this is what you're going to write in the box, they can dress themselves, they can feed themselves, they can do a minimal job with independent, uh, minimal job, and they require some oversight, some overview. What that means is, so what would be a minimal job? What would be a low-level job that someone could handle? Lucas? Like selling coffee. Selling coffee, absolutely. Okay, those kids work so hard on that stuff. They're here at like 6.30 every single morning working on that. You guys are so spoiled that you guys have a little coffee shop. Everywhere else, everyone just is cranky all day without coffee. What do you got? Be like a bus boy. Bus boy, bus girl, absolutely. Uh, working in restaurants, dealing with the dishware. What is the most common one we see? Jillian? Bagging groceries at Publix. They are able to hold a job. Okay, minimal. Doesn't take that much intelligence to really get in bag groceries. If you've never bagged groceries, you should try it because it's not that fun. I did it for an entire summer. It's hard because people get so fussy, which I'll come back to here in a second. So mild. They're able to uh, do things. They can live on their own. They do have independence, but they need to be supervised, which means an adult is checking on them regularly, whether it's their parent or guardian or provider, which means they are have some sort. Uh, my parents have a bunch of friends, not a bunch, they have two friends, who have uh, kids who are uh, developmentally delayed in the mild category. And they have a mother, mother-in-law suite in the back of their house, which is they just have a little separate living quarters for the kid, and the kid just kind of lives there. But the parents are like 15 feet away. They're kind of supervising and stuff like that, but they have some independence, but not complete independence. Everyone good? Okay, so 
Then you have your moderate, which are an IQ level of 40 to 55. When we're talking about IQ, when we're talking about your moderate, probably here at plant, we probably have no more than 10%, more likely like one or two kids. When we're talking about moderate uh, retardation, these are kids who need supervision on a regular basis. Okay, so they're constantly, they cannot hold a job. They cannot cook for themselves, prepare for themselves, and struggle with eating. And they have hygiene problems. Uh, specifically, uh, at the school I used to work at, I was involved in their special education program. Uh, mostly because I have a master's in special education in varying exceptionalities with a focus on autism. So I have my endorsements and I have all that stuff. So technically I could teach special ed today if I wanted to. And I have been involved I have very heavily in it my whole life. And we'll get to that story here in a moment. But what I'm telling you is that there's kids here at Plant who have AIDS. Have you seen them? They constantly have an adult following them around. There's one adult tied to one kid. Those are kids who are going to fall into this category, that they need the constant supervision. One of the reasons why is because, A, they need to be supervised at all times. They can't have any gaps of supervision. The other thing is, is that the hygiene component, they can't pee and poop in a toilet by themselves. They need someone to go in and clean them up, handle all that stuff. And there are people here on campus who go in every single day and do that and handle it for you know these kids. So these are kids who are here on campus. You're not going to have too many. Like I said, most are going to be mild, but that is the case. We do have some kids here. Now, I've always been involved in special education. Up in Massachusetts, the school I was at for three years of my high school was a very, very, very big deal. Here at Plant High School, I'm very proud to say you guys have a huge Best Buddies program. Who's a part of Best Buddies? Good. So. The reason why Best Buddies is an amazing program for any school to have, and I was super active in it in my high school. Um, over here, Miss Radigan does such an amazing job. There's no point getting involved. Like, she's, like, flawless. Anyway, with that being said, uh, Best Buddies is great for the kid, but it's even better for who? It's parents. So think about it. If you have a kid who is mild to moderate, who is 17, 18, think about your life right now. So you're seven, 16, 17, 18. You go out with friends, correct? Toss in the box, Scotty. You go out with friends. Guess what? Your parents get a Friday night to themselves, right? You guys went to school. You guys, your parents get a little time before school, after school, whatever. When you're at soccer practice, football practice, whatever you're at, your parents get a little time to themselves and alone. When you have a uh, child who is developmentally or mentally uh, developmentally delayed, do you get much alone time? Okay, so imagine when you are 25, 26, getting married, when you're 27, 28, thinking about having kids, okay, and you have a kid, are you thinking about not having a moment alone for the rest of your life? Do you think having you people was easy or hard on your parents? Hard, hard, you people are hard, okay? Imagine having a kid who needs constant supervision, constant handling, you're in the bathroom with them, cleaning and doing all this stuff, and you don't know if they're ever going to be independent. Do you think that would be incredibly difficult? So programs like Best Buddies, yes, they're great for the kids. They're socializing, they're interacting, they're learning how to communicate and have conversations. But who is it really the best for? The parents. They get a break. They get to go out and have a date. They get to just sit at home in their pajamas and just veg out for a couple hours and do absolutely nothing and reconnect with their spouse, their partner, Okay, just because they need, if, is, if you take care of yourself as a parent, you're going to be a better parent. Can we agree? And so that's why Best Buddies is such a huge deal and such a big deal. Whether you see that now, uh, before, but now you do, don't you? How happy are those parents to drop off those kids? They are so happy. And does that make them bad parents? No. They just need a break. And the break is because it's constant. Every single day, it's the same thing over and over, and Best Buddies really gives them that opportunity. It's what, once a month? Right? You do an event once a month. Imagine, they literally circle that on their calendar, and it's a big deal for them because think about how hard it is. So, I have, so my mentor when I was in, uh, so in high school, I took my, I took a class, uh, I took A-Push, AP Psych, 
and a couple other APs with a guy named Murphy. Okay, Murphy came up with numbers. Murphy came up with focus, study guide, outline, index cards. My entire classroom is Murphy's fault. So when you guys fuss and complain about how much you hate what, like all the setups and all that crap, blame Murphy. And know that I've sat there and did the same damn things. I mean, I made my own worksheets, but I used to do it for A push, A P Psych, A P Gov. Um, I would sit there and do the same thing because that's how his classroom runs, and that's why. So Murphy is one of my favorite people in the whole wide world. We email all the time. I call him. I'm going to his daughter's wedding, Abby's wedding, here in the spring. I'm so excited about it. But uh, Murphy's pride and joy is his baby boy, Jimba. He's 21 years old, and he has an IQ of 41. So he is technically moderate, but I think we can agree he's pretty severe, yes? Okay, so Jimbo is literally the most amazing guy you've ever met. He is completely nonverbal. He has never spoken a word in his life, okay? He wears a diaper 24-7. He cannot feed himself. He can make three symbols, goes back and forth. Now, Jimbo is 21 years old. Why is that significant, ladies and gentlemen? Why is this year a big year? What do you got? That's like, you can't be in high school. You can't be in high school. This is his last year in high school. So, just so you think big picture in real life. So, Jimbo is 21 years old. Jimbo's not going to make it to 27, 28. His body's already shutting down. The more, the lower you are, on IQ, the long, less your lifespan is. So Jimbo is already really low. He's not going to make it to 25, 27, definitely not 30. With that being said, he's already having huge health problems. Murphy is 73 years old, and he's teaching every single day. Okay, He can't retire because he needs the paycheck and he needs the health insurance for his son, correct? He's a dependent. So with that being said, um, Murphy has to deal with this new struggle. His son is aging out of high school this year. So Murphy has to make the decision. You either quit teaching and go home, but guess what he loses? The paycheck and he misses um, the dependency of the insurance. Or he can keep teaching and they send Jimbo to an uh, adult daycare center where it costs, guess how much? About a year's teacher salary. So he is literally trying to make the decision of what the hell do we do? Another big picture item that their family is struggling with is that his daughter, Abby, is turning tw is 25. She's getting married to this guy named James. He's really wonderful. They met in Florida. She is an accountant. He is a in the financial market somehow. Anyway, with that being said, they're now trying to convince their dad to let Jimbo live with them. Murph is 73 years old, ladies and gentlemen, and he has a 21-year-old son who requires full-time care. He's getting really old. Can we agree? He looks really old. That man has aged a lot in the last couple of years. So his daughter, his oldest daughter, his only daughter, who happens to be older, she's 25, 20, 25, um, is trying to take over. Do we see the problem here? Do you think starting a marriage with a 20-year-old, 21-year-old, completely dependent brother would be easy or hard? Hard, absolutely. But she's doing it because she wants to make her dad's life a lot easier, correct? These are the things you have to think about, ladies and gentlemen. It's a very complicated situation. You know, and that's when you see kids, you can tell when someone, there's someone, there's something off about someone, correct? It's about understanding what is going on in the lives of those people and kind of really processing what could be going on and preaching patience. So when we talk about severe, these people aren't able to feed themselves, have no hygiene ability, have very limited physical movement. And you are not seeing these people in public, really. Very, very rarely, if ever, will you see them in public. Okay? Then you have the profound. 
Her founds are living in hospitals where they require 100% of the time they're attached or into a bed where they are, all of their needs are being met by other people. Literally can't stand, can't walk, can't crawl, all of those components. I think we can agree from the profound level, these people typically don't last long in the world. They die off very quickly. When fundamentally your body can't perform the basic functions that require life, correct? Your body naturally just kind of starts shutting down and you die an early death. Uh, severe, typically most people who fit into this category don't make it past the age of 20. When we're talking about moderate, you're making it up to like 25, 30. No more than 35. Mild, you can make it up to 50, 55, 60. They're living shorter lives than the rest of us. And that is incredibly true. So, when you're at Publix and you see someone harassing a the slow bagger, like McCray saw like a year and a half, like a year and a half ago, it's still bothersome. Um, some lady was giving this bagger who was clearly delayed, had to be mild, correct? Because no one really is capable of else. Um, and the lady made a crappy comment to him. McCray looked at her and was just like, what are you doing? And she made a second crappy comment. And he was like, what the hell is your problem? And then she made a third comment. And McCray and a bunch of other people in the line just got pissed. The public's manager told her she wasn't welcome back here. And everything got heated and stuff like that. Guys, it is on you. It is your personal responsibility. If you hear something and you don't say something, I'm not saying you need to go get into a fist fight at Publix. If you want to. <laughs> but if you hear someone saying something that is demeaning or anything to anyone, it is on you as much as it is as the person if you just allow it to continue. And that is so truthful here at Plant, ladies and gentlemen. When you're talking about Plant High School, we have a really amazing program here. Ms. Radigan <laughs> does an incredible job with our special ed department. And 95% of Plant High School is just incredible with welcoming these kids, participating with these kids, and doing so many incredible things. But I would say about 5% of our population are rude, make these kids say stupid things, do stupid things, kind of put them out there. Would you agree? If you allow that to occur, it's on you. You are allowing it to occur by not saying something. I'm not saying you have to get in that kid's face. But report it. Say something. It's not on you. It's a big picture thing. And you don't know what people are going through when we talk about this. Today I've learned I have like a bunch of kids who have brothers or sisters who are on this scale. You know, and they're going through real life struggles and stuff at home. Like things are tough. But they love their brother or sister. Like Jimbo, I love Jimbo. Jimbo doesn't love anything as much as he loves Murphy. And directly below Murphy is fried chicken. It is his favorite thing in the world, and he is the happiest kid you've ever met. When you meet him, the only thing you can do is smile and say, hi, Jimbo, because he's just so excited. He loves blonde hair, and so he goes over and, like, pets blonde hair, and he goes, because he has blonde hair, too, and he'll just go like that, and he'll just be like that, and then, and then you're like, yeah, I know, Jimbo, and then you're like, he won't, he just keep doing it. He'll just keep doing it the whole time, and he'll just sit there and just pet you like a cat. And he's just the happiest kid you've ever met. He's the sweetest kid you've ever met. But, I mean, it, it, it's just where he is. And so know that when you're seeing things and you pick up on things, because we're all intuitive, there's a lot going on. So when you ask me why I don't want kids, it's not because I don't think I could be a mom. I think I could be. But I'm terrified about being a good mom, you know? And that's the burden you have, is being a good mom, a good dad. If you decide to bring a life into this world, then you, I really do believe you have to sacrifice yourself for the kid. You don't become a helicopter parent because I don't think that's a good thing, but you put that kid first. I'm not ready to be selfless, my friends. Like, I can't imagine having a kid and some of it, and it's on me, you know what I mean? Like genetically, environmentally, all that stuff. I mean, that's a lot of responsibility, and I'm just not mature enough. You know? Maybe I'll never be, and I think I'm okay with that because I think it's important that you understand where you are in the world. Are you ready? If you have a kid who is born developmentally delayed, 
Are you ready to spend the next 25 of your years of your life working through it? On the other side of it, you people out there are wonderful human beings. Would you want to deal with you for 18 years? Katie's like, absolutely not. I would not want to deal with Katie, I don't want to deal with you for two, and here I am. Okay? So, I mean, it's a conversation. You have to think of all the worst-case scenarios. And sadly, this is, but there is joy on that worst-case scenario. There is no one happier in the world than some of these kids here at Plant High School. First of all, who's the kid who sings all the damn time? That kid. Oh, my God. I would just love a day in his life. He is just so happy, and he just wants to make people happy. That simplicity, I think, is beautiful, and I think if you don't see that kid and smile, there's something wrong with you because he just wants to make people happy. And the other kid who walks around like this, oh, my God, he just wants to talk to everyone and be involved with everyone, and he is such like a genuine light on campus. And that's the importance of public education, is the fact that you guys are exposed to different people from different backgrounds, different races, different religion, different ethnicities, and different intellectual platforms. Because 95% of plants sees these kids and they're like, yeah, we're great kids, participating in amazing programs like Best Buddies. You probably wouldn't have that exposure on your own, would you? But now that you know this, when you see a kid at Publix being picked on by a grown ass woman. Sorry. You know better, don't you? So say something. Do something. Because it's not fair. You can't be, you shouldn't be harassed for who you are. By the way, this is part three causes. You see, there's a second above four, there's a space, that's it. So, causes. What causes mental retardation, developmental delay, all those components? Um, deprived environments are your most common. So, during delivery, if your mom had difficulty giving birth to you, uh, that you had to have an emergency, she had to have, not you, that would be weird as the baby, have an emergency C-section, that would be so weird. If your mom had to have an emergency C-section because of the uh, umbilical cord getting wrapped around one's throat, if you got stuck in the birth canal, any of those different types of things will affect it. Fetal alcohol syndrome, F -E -F -F -A -S, is another cause. I would write that down in there. If your mother is drinking during pres uh, presidency. Oh, my God, what is wrong with her? <laughs> during pregnancy, that will have an effect to it. Uh, if your mother isn't eating correctly. Now, ladies, <clears throat> when we get to development starting next week, there's a lot of me talking to you about what it's like to carry a child. Not that I know from first-hand experience because it sounds terrifying. But with that being said, gentlemen, it is your responsibility to make sure the woman that you've decided is going to carry your child is doing the right thing by your child, correct? Yeah, yeah, it is. So you being like, oh, I don't know if she's taking her prenatal vitamins. It's literally your genetics. It matters. Anyway. Uh, dietary deficiency, so if you're not getting enough calories, uh, all those different types of things are going to hurt the brain development. All right. What a what an exciting day for a conversation, right? It's really uplifting. Yes. Um. So, like, all those the causes you were talking about. Yeah. Is that like just during pregnancy, or like, what if the mother? I mean, if it's early on in life, like really early, early, like early, early, like within the first like six or eight months. What? So, like, are these kids automatically born with it, or is it? If you're born with it. So, how do you figure it out? So, uh, oh, very good. How are infants become developmentally mental? Or if you look at part, uh, if you look at number three, I'm going to answer that question right now. We detect mental retardation by the missing of milestones. We detect, this is number three, you're going to want to write it down because I think that's a test question. We detect mental retardation by the missing of milestones. Who can raise your hand and tell me what's a milestone? First steps, what's another milestone? Lucas. First word. first word, what else? We don't know. All we can say is walk and uh, talk. Potty training, yes! That was like a big moment for your parents because they were like, thank God, we finally are starting to have an out in this whole wiping your butt thing. Yes, okay. 
when we talk about milestones, every single kid normal, who is of normal intelligence hits them around the same time. Does that make sense? So I think your first, like, uh, your first step is around uh, week 64. There's, like, specific weeks. Like, you're in a week. Yeah, no, no, no. You're like, uh, you're like eight months in. What the hell the hell that is? There's only 52 months of uh, weeks in a year, so that was wrong. It's like week 30. Anyway, you're like eight months in. You should be taking your first step. So when you go to the doctor, when you have a small child, you go to the doctor on a regular basis to get all your shots and check on your milestones and stuff. And if you're not making those milestones, the doctor is going to have you come in more often and more frequently to make sure you're not. Because the baby can't say, hey, it's not really... Working much up here, correct? <laughs> I mean, I would love to go and tell my doctor, like, hey, this isn't working. Can we figure this out? I'm getting too old. Uh, but the thing is, is that the mi missing of the milestones indicates that there's a problem. The fact that your brain and your physical capabilities are connected. We get that, right? You figured this out at this point. So if you're physically not making your milestones, there has to be something either physically wrong with you or cognitively wrong with you. And that allows the doctors to kind of pursue that, but we get really into that next week. On your study guide, you're going to see gifted. I would write this down. How do they not know when it works? Because every baby looks cranky. I mean, some, like Down syndrome, you're going to know at birth because there's, there's physical components that tell you that. But not everyone has it. You can't tell on everyone. Well, think about it. I mean, how many of you have a really, really bright brother or sister, like a really smart one? And then you feel, in comparison, you're not as bright, right? I bet you look the same coming home from the hospital, did you not? There you go. All right, so gifted. Um, so this is kind of a pet peeve of mine. And I mean, no offense to anyone in the room. This is on your study guide, by the way, gifted. Um, oh, it's also on your focus, by the way. It's also there, so you can fire us that off. Only 2% of the world's population earn the title of gifted. Here at Plant High School, we have 654. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, do you think Plant High School is the capital of intelligence for the entire world? Definitely. No. I'm sorry. If you have the title of gifted, you may actually be gifted. Or the test they give you to decide if you're gifted is not an actual Stanford Binet, but it's the Stanford Binet school one. So, sorry. What? Is it, is it like the thing they did in elementary school? It's like yes. Binet. It's not an actual, it's a very watered down Stanford Binet. If you have the gift, keep in mind, if you're labeled gifted, and this is not attacking anyone in this room, I genuinely, I, 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 know, I could find out who you are, but I genuinely don't care. If you were labeled gifted, that means you're in the top 2% of the smartest people in the entire world. I don't care if you're George Bentley. I bet George Bentley would say, yeah, I'm pretty bright, but have you heard about all these other people? Right? It takes a lot of ego to say, yeah, I'm up there. <laughs> right? So, if you take a true, genuine Stanford Binet, then you may be in the 2% of the population. There's an organization called Mensa or something that is the world's smartest people, anyone over 130 and stuff like that, um, all that stuff. So, please note that schools are diluting the word gifted. When we talk about it in psychology, we're talking about, like, the real legit deal. Can we agree? No offense, that's what it is. So, Terman is going to do a longitudinal study, which means it's done over a long period of time, and he shows that gifted students are happy. It makes, like, when you think of, like, people like George, what's his name? I just said it. What is it? George Bentley. George Bentley is an odd guy. Can we agree? I've only met him twice. He's a very nice guy. He's a very pleasant young man, if you ask him a direct question, but he's an odd guy. The man just did laps around the school during lunch, correct? I mean, he's just, he's got so much going on upstairs. It makes a lot of sense. He doesn't have time for us plebs. It makes a lot of sense. He's just so smart, right? What? George Bentley. He's like a genius who went here, graduated last year. With that being said, yeah. I always see him walking on page where he's so cute. So, with that being said, it's expected, when you think of George Bentley and how awkward he was in high school, right? I mean, not that you're at your best times right now, no offense. You have better times to come. 
But George Benley was even more awkward than the awkward high schoolers in high school, correct? A lot of people assume that he's going to die alone, surrounded by cats. But Terman found out that's actually not the case. He has an Amy Farrah Fowler out there for him somewhere. See, she gets a reference. Thank you. Thank you. It's a Big Bang reference. Uh, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's actually a great joke. It was actually a great joke, but... Only my girl Zoe knew it. Anyway, so stronger correlations between your intelligence. If your parents are smart, you're smart. If your parents are dumb, you're dumb. You're dumb. Do a degree. So that test question. So that was the test question. Yes. Now I know the answer. Yay! I don't know. I changed it. This thing, right? this thing, oh, I have them. I just haven't put them up.